And I love the comedy in all of these films. You managed to work in comedy. That was an intentional thing? Or, you know, how did you put this in so many films? Obviously, Guardians of the Galaxy was a huge yeah. breakthrough in that regard. I think it's... Uh, I don't know that we ever sat down and said, we're going to make... You know, we're going to drive towards comedic moments in all of our movies. I think a lot of my favorite movies have comedic moments. I think the very best movies have comedic moments because I do think when you have an audience laughing with you, that is an instant connecting piece with the film. They're opening themselves up emotionally to the pretend images you're flickering in front of them. And if you can get them to laugh, you have a better chance of getting them to have other emotions across the, uh, along the way. Certainly it was Favreau who started that tone and who was able to navigate quite well the gravitas of a, of a businessman being injured in, in Afghanistan and being held hostage with that same businessman um, attempting to use his new repulsor rockets and hit the wall, literally smash into the wall, drop to the ground, have a fire extinguisher, put him out. Um, so that was, that that worked was, a, was an interesting uh, lesson for us as we started to get into, into more of it. And there's a sense that we take our characters very, very seriously, right. but you also can have fun with the absurdity of certain scenarios. And there's a deft way to do that, which I think lets the audience in on the joke, but without breaking the reality of the world building that you're creating. Yeah, well, Thor Ragnarok could have been in the uh, comedy category at the Golden Globes, in my opinion. I mean, it really is, it's a hilarious movie on its own level, uh, you know. It is, and Chris Hemsworth is such a funny comedic actor. And he's that, a deadpan, you know. Yeah, uh, he, he's, he's great, and seeing, certainly, people who've seen Infinity War, uh, uh, he continues in, in Avengers 4 in very unexpected and fun ways. He's fun. Yeah. He's not just this incredible Adonis, which he also is, but he is... <laughs> he's hilarious. And as we were working towards Thor 3, talking about how do we avoid sequelitis, how do we take it somewhere new, I was talking to Chris on the set of uh, Age of Ultron, and he was in the full Thor regalia, we were between takes, and he was asking about Thor 3, and I said, we, we're going to have to think about it to do something very, very different. And there were two things that started. One, he was very, very jealous of Captain America getting all of these other characters in the Winter Soldier, right. and then certainly <laughs> in Civil War, when he got Iron Man and, and all, all of them together. And he'd go, mate, what about, mate, what about, who am I getting? Um, and he was always sort of joking, not joking, about it. Uh, so we would start thinking how, and that is one of the ways that the Hulk became a part of that, became a part of that storyline. Um, but also, I said to him on set that day, I said, when we first cast you, Chris, Thor was blonde hair, a big red cape, a hammer, uh, I'm embarrassed to say, blonde eyebrows, which we dyed, his eyebrows in Thor 1. It's ridiculous. Uh, uh. Blonde beard. <laughs> I said, now, Chris, Thor's you. So we could rip off the cape. We could, sh we could shave off the hair. We could destroy the hammer. And it's still, you're still Thor. And I was like, wait a minute, let's do all three of those things. <laughs> and then we've, that led us towards Ragnarok. Mm -hmm.